welcome to a special edition of the T Long Report. I am your boy T Long, aka Tony Long Jr. And no, you're not dreaming. You're hearing me today on a Friday. I know I usually do the sports, but today we're doing a special interview today. Thank you, Jolly uh, Rex Lawson, for bringing us in with Jolly Papa. As today, the theme for today's interview is welcoming in, welcoming in a special person, Namdi Kanu. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank the, you. the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. Yes. All right. We we also got a couple of people too with us. We also got Ikena Wananini. That's right. Deputy COC. Yes. And for those of you who wants to know the acronym to that, that is Coordinator of Coordinators. That's correct. And then we finally have OBD Obinu. That's correct. And he is the USA National Coordinator. That's Thank correct. You very much. First off, gentlemen, it is an honor right now to do an interview with you guys. This is my first ever international interview. So th thank you for not only being here today, but this is also a milestone for me today. So I am honored to be in your presence right now, and welcome to KDHR. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. All right. How has you guys' stay so far in the state so far? It's been very, very good. It's been lovely. It's a lot cooler than when I was last here. It was very warm then. Uh, is this your winter? I don't know. Is this your winter or is oh, it your summer? Oh, um, uh, is, I this, is this your summer or is it your winter? <laughs> is it summer? Oh, it's still summer. It's still summer. Oh, we got to hit a hot streak coming up soon. Is uh, it? Especially, they surprisingly, September, especially out here in the city of Los Angeles, it's usually the hottest time of the year. Is hottest it? month of the year between july and september but september usually gets real hot and then of course it's going to drop down sooner or later because we're about to hit that autumn season so mm -hmm. yeah it's strange usually even when you, it's funny you say that when you come out here during christmas time you would think it's still summertime out here most yeah. of the time because it feels like summer most of the time when you're out here in la it feels like it's summer most of the time and then of course we had the occasional rains over the summer Mm -hmm. We had that going on, too. You would have thought we was in January or February, but the only reason why I felt like it was summer, of course, we knew it was summer is because it's, instead of the rain being cold rain, mm -hmm. it was still it's, warm, it's rain. warm Warm rain. Okay. okay. Wonderful. Well, it's good to be here all the same. Okay. So tell me, what is your role before we get started? What is your role as the in leader of the indigenous people of Biafra? Uh, my role is to make sure that we um, lead our people um, towards uh, freedom from oppression, freedom from every form of marginalization, to make sure that the Biafran people emerge as a free people, independent people, the same way that the USA emerged from colonial rule of the British, is to make sure that we are free as a people. That is why we're here, making sure that our people come out of the mess that is Nigeria as one free independent nation. All right. And Mr. Wananini, what is your role as Deputy COC? Yes, uh, my role as a Deputy COC, I, uh, what I do is uh, to make sure I go, uh, I'm also a mobilization officer. I make sure that all the assemblies, we have what I call families, you know, uh, where we establish uh, throughout the whole world. We have about uh, more than 80, uh, we have more than 80 countries. And also we have more than 360 uh, family, families. So I make sure that uh, the new families are created and make sure they, form, uh, they function very well and make sure that uh, they uh, follow the tenets of the re restoration of Biafra. Um, so, all right, awesome, awesome. All right, Mr. Obinu, what is your role as the USA National Coordinator? My role as a USA coordinator is a little bit of a step down from Wanonani. It's making sure that the, all the families in different parts of the states are stable, that our people are being educated to understand the reason for their human inherent human right so that we can come together and go home and reclaim the land that Chukwa Biyama has given us. All right, awesome, awesome. All right, so Mr. Kanu, 
first question Biafra Biafra excuse me is regarded as a part of Nigeria why do you want to succeed from secede from Nigeria and what is the makeup of Biafra and the population we we are not seceding we want to restore what was there before it was the British that came and destroyed what was and created Nigeria in its place um, the word secession doesn't really arise if we look at the, the, the originality, or should I say the totality of the problem. We existed and have been in existence for over 5,000 years. We cannot therefore secede from something that is less than 60 years old. It sounds quite um, you know, um, disingenuous of some people to say that we are seceding. No, we are not. We are seeking to reestablish what was there before. That thing that was there is like a piece of um, what I call political archaeology to discover your lost self, to go back to who you used to be. Because in Nigeria, as it stands today, we don't exist as a people. We have jettisoned and abandoned everything that made us very unique. And people who are considered to be children of Chukukika Biyama, who is God to you and I, and also to ensure that our people enjoy the benefits of life and also to be able to test freedom, which we are known for, because we are not free in Nigeria and has never been free within Nigeria. And we wish to establish and be on our own in order for us to enjoy the final things of life, like freedom, which some people take for granted in the USA, which, which we also want as a people. They said for the same reason that USA wanted to be free from Britain is the same reason why we want to be free from Nigeria. Is not part of us and can never ever be. It's a concocted name. Nobody knows what it means. If I ask you now what's the meaning of Nigeria, you don't know. No one on earth knows what it means. It's just a made up name. It's not an African name. It's not a black African name. Nobody knows what it means. But somehow we are being forced to answer it. So we want to go back to a name that actually means something. A name that represents who we are and that is what Biafra is all about. All right. So you're calling the president Buhari a pedophile and a terrorist why because he is a pedophile because he's a terrorist he raped a girl at the age of he was 45 and the girl was only nine years old oh. and um, got her pregnant at the age of 13 and now is um, of course rightfully or wrongly married to her that is what happens in that very place that people don't quite know about is the extent of child molestation and child abuse that goes on in a place as backward um, intellectually and morally as Nigeria is. These are some of the problems they are seeking to shield themselves away from because they know that with the existence of Biafra and all the rest of the component ethnicities that currently make up the British-made Nigeria, that some of these rather detestable and abominable deeds will be a thing of the past. And they revel in it, they enjoy it, and that is why they seek the perpetuation of Nigeria. Because this man, Buhari, as a matter of fact, what the world needs to know is that anytime you're shaking his hand, you know you're shaking the hands that are abused, basically raped a nine-year-old girl. And that is a fact. Is um, is noted everywhere. People are aware of it. But for some reason, they don't want to talk about it because um, to them, it is not politically convenient to try to upset somebody who has control of um, vast amounts of oil well. That seems to be the problem. All right. Do many Biafrans support your cause? Not many. Every Biafran, every genuine Biafran, I must add, supports this very cause that we are backing up on because um, as a natural consequence, we embody the virtues of freedom. Our name by implication is about freedom and we have autonomous communities where we come from which means that naturally speaking we are the only people that subscribe to the universality and should i say irreducibility of freedom that is where we have autonomous communities so everybody who is genuine everybody who is a biafran by implication or should i say even through dna for instance you must subscribe to this so i can confidently tell you that everybody is on board when it comes to this there may be a few dissenting voices those of them whose parents are not biafran these are the people that their fathers are you know from our safulani 
predominantly those we are seeking to get away from. So if you're bound to represent the views of where your father comes from, I don't think anything wrong with it. So you may find one or two of those kinds of people within us. But in the main, a sizable majority of our people are in favor of Biafra and they're working towards it very assiduously. Okay. What are your plans to bring those of them sitting on the fence on board? is by making sure we remain truthful through our broadcast on Radio Biafra, which incidentally makes us the number one trending station in the world, which is um, quite bizarre, but it's true, is to also ensure a high degree of consistency in terms of our approach, the work that we do, and to very, very vigorously pursue what we know to be right. And that thing we know to be right is the freedom of our people. And to reassure them through what we do by our activities, that we don't intend to go back on this, that we don't intend to abandon or to jettison this very quest. And wherever we find them, as we will find them tomorrow here in Los Angeles at the World Igbo Congress to preach this very gospel of redemption and of restoration. And most of them are buying into it and they will need to buy into it. Okay. And Radio Biafra, what is, is that a radio station or a show? Uh, elaborate on it. It's a radio station. We have our own app, incidentally. Just Radio Biafra. If you look for it, you can be able to find it. It's on all platforms. We have a website also, Radio Biafra website. We have um, a station also on satellite, but, uh, you know, ostensibly covering Africa. We have a television station. We have um, a telephone line you can phone into. We are also on FM and also on AM as well. It's a very massive and very powerful media um empire so to speak if i can use that word so we are everywhere radio biafra is absolutely huge and millions of listeners do tune in every blessed day to listen to radio biafra and when did radio biafra got started it was started in 2009 unfortunately then due to um can i say financial difficulties we weren't able to continue uh, but we were then relaunched on april of 2012 and today we are stronger than ever as i said the very number one trending radio station in the world. All right. Good to hear. Now, the next question I have is, if a war breaks out between Biafra and Nigeria, how are you going to handle the situation without a standing army? And where shedding blood is a distinct possibility? Um, they are shedding our blood already. They are killing us already. Um, it's quite disheartening that the world has refused to acknowledge the injustices being meted out to Biafran people. On the 30th of August, um, in the afternoon, around about 4 p.m. Biafran time, the Nigerian army, at the command of Buhari, who incidentally is the head of state of Nigeria, asked his soldiers to shoot at unarmed people who were going about to evangelize, who were going about singing songs, and they were shot dead. Three of them died as a result. Over 30 people were seriously injured and hospitalized as a direct consequence of Buhari issuing those others. So when we say he's a terrorist, we know what we're talking about. He sponsored that very terrorist act. Because terrorism sometimes doesn't just apply to actors who are outside the realm or control of state actually perpetrating heinous crimes. Terrorism can often mean also a state carrying out acts of terror, of intimidation and fear against civilian population. So what happened on the 30th of August in Onisha is deplorable and can only be sanctioned by a terrorist state like that of Nigeria. Now, having said that, them coming to kill us means that they intend to kill our people so that they can continue with their subjugation, their intimidation, and their fear. Their hope is that by frightening our people into a very rather wretched situation or position, we will jettison or abandon our quest for freedom, which will never ever happen. If in the process of trying to defend ourselves, which we are required and obligated to do under every international law, convention, and norm, then we cannot guarantee what may be the outcome of it. But one thing we know for certain is this. We are going to defend our people by whatever means we consider necessary, and we are going to do it. If it means the loss of life or the shedding of blood, then so be it. They are shedding our blood already, so we don't have anything to lose than to defend our lives, defend our territories and our people. That's what we're going to do. Okay. Do you have foreign countries sympathetic to Biafran cause since it is very difficult and near impossible 
to go at, at it alone? And have you presented your case to among to the United Nations and African Union? Yes, we have done so and will continue to do so. There is no senator in America who can claim not to be aware of the agitation for Biafra. We've also written to Obama as well, haven't we? Yes. We, we have written to times. everybody. We have we have a lot of countries that are sympathetic to our cause. I think that's the very right word to you. Sympathetic, yes. In terms of very open, overt support, I couldn't possibly tell you because as that will be prejudicing people's relationship, which should be kept very private and very quiet. Now, a lot of people are in support of Biafra. That is why we are in over 88 countries of the world where we are legally registered, where we are recognized and appreciated as Biafrans, where we go out on the streets to evangelize, to preach this very gospel, where we go out on the streets to try and preach to local populations about what we're doing without any intimidation, harassment, arrest, nothing of that sort whatsoever. All over the world on the 30th of May and demonstrably so. All over this very planet, Biafran people came out to remember those that died fighting for them. So in that regard, therefore, I can tell you, if not, if not even publicly acknowledge that there are many countries around the world that are sympathetic to what we are doing. And in the fullness of time, you will see their support begin to come out publicly. Okay. You claim ancestry, ancestral cousins to Israel. What is your present relationship to Israel since Nigeria claims to be working with Israel in several fronts? The relationship still remains. It is up to us. It is up to us as Biafrans to, to try to strengthen and deepen the bond between ourselves and Israel. The, the bond and the ties we have to Israel goes back in time, even to biblical times. Um, where we come from, our progenitor, who is Ari. For instance, is also mentioned in the scriptures. We have Ubu God, which means God's compound where we come from. We uh, we circumcise on the eighth day after a male child is born. We have Bar Mitzvah, which is also the coming out or the coming of age of a boy. We have all these things where we come from, things that no one can explain, even the names we bear. Even if we can recall for, for a moment that the name of um, Yahweh Yeshua, who uh, for understandable reasons within Christendom they call Jesus Christ, is um, Chizoba, which is a name that we bear, which means that God saves. All of these things point to indisputably one fact that we have at least common ancestry, if not common lineage. And I don't think that philosophers or astrologers, or should I say, even archaeologists are quarreling with that. The issue that we are having as a people is this, is that we must recognize also that Israel has every right as a state to engage in diplomatic um, um, ties or relations with other countries around the world. Where that leads them to vis-a-vis -vis that which they have with Nigeria right now is entirely up to them. But one thing is unmistakable is that their ties to us our ties to them is there for history to record and to acknowledge if not even recognize at this point in time so what we are saying i'm going to say is that we'll keep on working with israel and we are not prepared to meddle in israel's foreign relations when the time comes for them to show their support for us publicly then i'm sure that they will rise to the occasion and they will be able to do so okay do you have any form of negotiation or understanding between your organization and Nigerian government regarding referendum to voice people's opinion? Um, Nigeria is not a civilized country. Nigeria is not a country that practices democracy, neither do they adhere to the rule of law. When you talk about referendum within a society that does not have an appreciation or who could not possibly begin to appreciate the need to discuss issues like referendum, then you have very serious difficulties. Nigeria is not, I repeat, is not a civilized nation and is incapable of appreciating the need for a referendum. You can talk about a referendum in places like, say, Canada, where you have the bloc Quebec, uh, the Quebecoans wanting to be free from the central Canadian government, where there have been um, referendum or referenda uh, more than once. You can talk about Scotland vis-a-vis uh, -vis the case of United Kingdom, where there was a referendum as well not too long ago, or even in the case of Catalonia in Spain, where they unilaterally organized their own kind of mini referendum. The difference between European countries, or should I say civilized or advanced countries of the world and Nigeria is that Nigeria is a very primitive collection of people 
who are not civilized enough to appreciate what referendum means. Even if you ask Buhari today, what is the meaning of referendum? He doesn't know what it means. The man is not educated, so he couldn't possibly you know, know what to do in a referendum. They don't understand the essence of dialogue or trying to discuss with people that you don't share the same views or opinions with. So what the method they have chosen makes referendum impossible. They have chosen the path of destruction, of death, of mayhem, of terrorism and of intimidation. And you will agree with me, that is not how to go about um, um, conducting or even negotiating for a referendum. I, I do hope they come to that uh, um, um, sometime in the future, but that will be entirely for them. As for us, there's only one way to go about this, and that is to fight for what we believe is, that, is rightfully ours. All right. You claim that Biafra is over 5,000 years old. Can you substantiate that? Because according to the records, Biafra was declared in 1967. It was declared in 1967. Declaration, you said, but every textbook in history. We built a pyramid at Udi. That is how we know. We had a form of learning and writing called Insibidi, of old, acknowledged by the Europeans, acknowledged by the British. So, in times gone by, my ancestors could read and they could write. But by the time that the British came, what they recorded in their history is that we cannot read and we cannot write. Therefore, we need to go to school to become westernized. But we had a form of writing and a form of communication long way before they came. If you look at our religion, our practices, and everything that we do, it is entirely biblical. There is no difference whatsoever. We have patterns, ways of life, which you can find today in Ethiopia. Ways of life which you can also find in parts of Israel. Now, if you look at the history of the people and the migration of our people, because we can tell. So one of the last settlers where we come from are the Ohafia people that came at last and moved from where Ibeku is today to where they have now settled in Bende. You will see that that pattern has been in existence for a very, very long time. If you look at the time that the archaeologists actually dated the artifacts found in the very first place that our progenitors settled, at a place called the confluence of Omambala, you will see that when those things were dated, they were incontrovertibly proven beyond every doubt that these people are at least a minimum over 5,000 years old. So these are, there are archaeological evidence to be able to prove it. Because people were asking questions a while ago, how did the Star of David find its way into the coin of a coin, into the currency, or should I say, into the, the, um, the legal tender? of a supposedly Islamic country, for instance. Then it was discovered, it was the British themselves that discovered this when they came to Biafra land. When they went to Omambala, they discovered the Star of David buried in the ground. They found all these things themselves. The pyramid you had at Udi, if you go and date it, you will see it is between 4,500 to 5,000 years old. It is there till tomorrow morning. The remnants are still there. But in the wider world, People don't know that black African people built pyramids. But they're there till tomorrow morning if you want to see it. So these are the things that point us inescapably to one conclusion. We are ancient people. Every map you see has Biafra in it. Every ancient map of Africa you will see Biafra in it. Very, very clear. Stretching all the way from Ethiopia down to the West African coast you have today where we are sitting. And all these things we have forgotten and get it. And people somehow think that the coming of our late leader, Ojuku, in 1967 is the rebirth, is the rebirth of Biafra, not the birth of Biafra, but rather a rebirth. So we've been here for a very, very long time as a people. So, do you, uh, so pretty much what you're saying is Biaf Biafra was here before Nigeria. The land of Biafra should have been discovered before Nigeria. It was there before even Britain was formed. We are older than Britain as a people. We are a very, very old and ancient people. We are older than Britain. Nigeria is less than 60 years old. Nigeria, is, the funniest thing is that people don't know that it wasn't actually black Africans who created Nigeria. It was Europeans that came and did it. When somebody says, oh, I'm a Nigerian, you ask the person, but your father is older than Nigeria. How can you come from a country that even your dad is older than? It doesn't make sense to anybody. But that is the way it is, unfortunately. Wow, that is interesting. That is very interesting. I, what I'm getting today so far is 
like something new to learn off of and I'm very appreciative of this right now. All Thank right. you. <laughs> what more can you tell Americans about IPOB and the type of help you want from them? The type of help we need is exactly what you're doing today is to publicize, to make the entire citizenship of, of America aware of the level of subjugation and injustice that we are undergoing. Unfortunately, and I, I rather feel very sad to draw this analogy, on the on September the is this September the eleventh or whatever is it? Yeah, no, is that correct? You talking about nine eleven? Exactly. No, sorry, nine eleven. That's, that's that's I'm correct. It's September, isn't it's it? September, exactly. Yeah. Nine eleven. <clears throat> America lost greatly in terms of both um, uh, material, in terms of psychologically as well, was severely um, affected as a result of it. I want to magnify 9-11 times, uh, should I say a thousand times, would that be appropriate? That yes, be about or, or, or more than that. Yes. That is what we've been enduring at the hands of Islamic incursion into our territory. They tried very many years ago, about 375 years ago, they tried to invade our land. They came to Islamize us and they were comprehensively defeated by an act that could only be described as biblical. They never... Their armies never came into our territories. They all died. They've been killing us ever since. And the last one was just um, two, was two Sundays ago. Yes. Right. Exactly. On the 30th of August. Why America is keeping quiet only? Heaven knows. I have no idea. Is it because somebody who is sympathetic to the killing of people is at the White House? I have no idea. But they're killing our people and nobody is saying anything about it. People die everywhere around the world. There are commissions of inquiry set up. People refer to world court in The Hague to be tried. You have people that have killed my people every blessed day for the past nearly 70 years. And they're still working about and nothing happens to them. I feel that the time has come for us to inform America that we can no longer stand idly by and watch our people being killed. Anything you hear from us in time to come we should not be blamed or held accountable for it. Therefore, Americans must prevail upon their leaders to prevail upon those of, in fact, to prevail upon the British, not the people in Nigeria, to prevail upon the British of the need to let Biafra go and to be free. If that doesn't happen, then um, I cannot possibly tell you how our people will react because then I won't be able to control them anymore. People are very, very upset. The world must know this. Very, very upset and very angry what was happening to them now i have another question where do you think how you think the situation is going to be in five years do you see it improving do you see it getting worse where where do you honestly see uh the situation at in five years for your uh, your land of biafra we uh, in five years time i want us to be building our schools to look as beautiful as this very one I want us to be building our roads, our land, to even invite um, African-Americans to come back and um, for some of you see where you come from because most of you incidentally come from Biafra. That is also a fact because we are naturally very hardworking, we are very creative and we are talented. A lot of the people you see in America today as African-Americans are uh, basically Biafran people. Now, in five years time, we want to be free. If we're not free in five years' time, then I can assure you, the world will never be the same. All right. Now, when it's all said and done for uh, you to stop being the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, uh, where do you, how do you want to go down in, in history to your people, your legacy? That Chukwu Biama, who is God, made it possible for Biafra to come under our watch. Not just me, but all these wonderful people who are here and many more all over the world. That Biafra came under our watch is how I want to be remembered. And I don't want to be remembered as anybody else apart from those who, during their time, Chukwu Kikabi, in heaven, found it within his grace to grant Biafra to them. Okay. Uh, any thoughts, Mr. Wananini? Yes, uh Thank you very much uh, uh, for the you know, for giving us this exposure. Uh, basically, uh, what the director said is uh, exactly what we're you know fighting by. Um, uh, we are going to make sure.
uh, within our power and within the grace of uh, Chukwa Biyama, that uh, Biafra is restored so that uh, most of us will go home, you know, and uh, be with our family. Like you said, most, almost uh, more than um, uh, uh, 80% of African Americans here are from Biafra, you know. And they want them to come home and stay with us, you know, and bring their technology and the ingenuity which they have, which is not being appreciated, you know. And uh, Biafra is a very, very wonderful place and uh, uh, it's going to be the conscious of the world because this is areas where you have people with high intellect. There's nothing we cannot do. We produce our own cars. We produce our own uh, engines. You know, we do a lot of stuff, you know, which uh, is not even privy to the world, you know. So, um, um, you know, we are doing all we can to make sure that uh, we bring our people together and to make sure that uh, uh, every human being, uh, you know, is given the chance to be able to exercise his uh, civil rights, you know. And uh, like I said, uh, what the director said, uh, we had an incident and uh, that incident, uh, uh, we're going to make sure that uh, uh, we took measures to make sure that uh, more killings of Biafrans do not happen. All right. Your thoughts, Mr. Obienu? Thank you very much. Um, I do want to emphasize that what we're doing is not illegal. Uh, to ask for your freedom is a God's given right. And that's what we're doing. As a matter of fact, it's enshrined in the UN document of right of self-determination. That means that if you are in any state or in any government where you are not treated equally, where you are killed, where you are marginalized, where your rights are being abused, that you have the right to ask to get out of that country. It was sanctioned by Bush in 2007 and by Obama in 2010. And what's surprising is that these individuals are sitting and watching us as if they, don't, they are not the people that made these rights. They're sitting and watching as if we are not humans. I know for sure in the United States you cannot kill an animal anyhow. But there we go in bare front land. Human beings, lives are being taken every day. Every day. And these people are running around like wild animals, feeling that they have the right to take people's rights. And I do want to appeal to the United States. What we are saying is just for the houses and Eurobats to leave us alone. And for that to happen, America needs to talk to you, uh, the British. Because in the first place, the creation of Nigeria was for the interest of the British. And we are tired of that. You can see the ongoing problem about immigration all over the world right now. It's the same problem created by the British. Because they come to take and they turn around and pretend like they don't know what's going on. We are asking for United States to support this right that they so cherish. Thank you so much. All right. Good, good, good. Now, one more question to ask. Is there any other thing you want to tell us about Biafra? And that could be from any of you three gentlemen. If you all got something to say, go on ahead. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, we are trying to uh, indicate that uh, most Biafrans uh, throughout the whole world uh, to come and join us. Uh, we've made a lot of efforts and uh, we've achieved a lot and uh, um, uh, we've created an, created an assembly that is generating uh, a lot of interest throughout the whole world. Um, we want uh, US, we want uh, you know to uh, assist us. Uh, we want uh, uh, Britain to leave us alone and uh, we want other countries that helped us and assisted us during the last uh, three year war to uh, come to our help. We don't need, uh, we're just, we just, just need, uh, you know, the uh, support. We don't need, you know, for them. I mean, we don't need them to, uh, like, giving us reports or anything. Just to say, you know, Biafra is here to stay. Like every other country, you know, uh, they uh, uh, help and sponsor the, the creation of uh, South Sudan, Eritrea, and Kosovo. 
and uh, we need that support. And, uh, this has been uh, agreed uh, with uh, uh, the Charter of Indigenous People of People's Rights, and uh, we want them to abide it. Even the, uh, the AU also has uh, an indication for people to uh, be on their own. So we are calling for all Biafrans everywhere uh, to come and join us so that uh, you know we can establish our kingdom and uh, go home and, uh, and relax. And um, um, we also need a lot of uh, support you know, from uh, African Americans because we are basically the same. And, um, uh, you know, this is all we are uh, requesting for. And uh, we need uh, assistance from everybody, you know, in terms of moral support, you know, in terms of uh, financial support, and to help us achieve our goal. Thank you, Standby. Yes, I do want to say that, dear friends, are good people. We are loving people. We are God-fearing people. We don't engage in any act of terrorism. We don't engage in hate. As you can, um, if you go into more studies, you will see that we are dispersed all over the world. And wherever we are, we work hard. We get along with the citizens. We marry them. We do things as human beings. We don't engage ourselves in any form of terrorism. So we are good people. And this is why we are asking the well-meaning of all United, uh, or the well-meaning citizens of the United States to have a second thought about supporting Biafra. And please help us so we can go home. Thank you. And um, drawing from what um, my two colleagues have just said, and all, you know, especially from what um, we did Bianu just finished saying now. America will know that the shoe bomber was coming here. Is that correct? The, is it the underpant bomber? Is it yes, correct? Yes. Is it Abdul Mutalab? Yeah, that's right. It's from Awasa Fulani territory. These are the ones, the, the favorites of the British. They love them. So they come from there to bomb USA. And they said... I'm sure they call him a Nigerian. Is that correct? That's correct. Which means tarring everybody with the same brush. Yeah. People will think that Nigerians are terrorists. And rightfully so. Of course they are. The house are Fulani people. Not Biafran people. Who killed the British soldier in, in London? Yoruba. It was Yoruba people. We have never ever before in the history of our people been implicated in any form of terrorism. But how is that Fulani people have been implicated? So also is Yoruba. Because we value life. You, when you see somebody, you say this is a human being. When we see somebody, we say this is mad, which means the beauty of life. We don't take life. We believe in the dictates of the Ten Commandments. We don't take life where we come from. If you kill somebody where we come from, it's considered as crime against the land, not even against that very person. It's the worst thing you can ever do. And you're ostracized. You're removed from. So you don't take life. Instead, you nurture, you cherish it. That is who we are. But they come because of that, because they know we don't go to take life easily. That is why it appears as if, you know, sometimes people can just come and kill us and get away with it. It's because it's very difficult for us. No Biafran will just rise up and go and kill somebody else. For no reason, it's not done where we come from. It's not just done. We value life itself because we believe that a human being is the beauty of life and is the exclusive preserve and the keep of the giver of life who is Chukwe Kabiyama in heaven. That is where we are very special and very unique people. We just want to be left alone. But if they don't leave us alone, then all that will have to change. Okay. And thank you very much for having us here. All right. Well, before we go, uh, any uh, where could more Americans learn more about Biafra? Like more things about social media. Uh, of course, you guys mentioned about Radio Biafra. Uh, you guys, are, is there any other place where uh, more Americans could be aware of what's going on? Yes, they can also, um, America is more tech savvy than any other group on this earth. So 
they can all start by going to download Radio Biafra app on their systems. Go and download Radio Biafra app. That is Radio B I A F R A. Radio Biafra. Go and download the app. Go also listen to Radio Biafra every evening. That is where we congregate. That is where we praise. That is where we worship the Most High. Also, you can join us on Facebook. We are, I think, it's the largest Facebook group. Isn't that correct? That's correct. Right. Everything right. we use, we're number one, you see. We are the largest Facebook group in the whole world. Radio Biafra London. If you go there, you'll be able to join us. You can also go and like our page, which is Radio Biafra. You can go to radiobiafra.co to listen to us, to contribute to our debate, and also try and join a family closest to you. If you listen to Radio Biafra, you can speak somewhere like one and any from time to time to find out how you can become a part of what we are doing every year. I think it's the 30th of May. Is that correct? Yes. Our Heroes Day. All over the world, we come out to celebrate and to honor those that died fighting for us. So you can also come out, all of you, next year and be part of that very great occasion. So that's how you can join us. Okay. Well, thank you guys again so much. Uh, and you, you said you're going to be out here for at least another few days for L.A.? That's correct, yes. Yes. All right. So you guys enjoy your stay out here. And it was an honor, complete honor to interview you guys. I am very privileged to be here. And hope everything go, hope and pray everything goes all right. And, sure. uh, and, and we can give you a local number to if, if they want to contact us. Uh, 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 the local number, uh, my name is uh, Ike Wanoneni. Uh, my telephone number is at three two three seven one seven four two 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 three two three seven one seven four two two two. Or you can call three one zero four one five eight seven two three. Again, it's three one zero four one five. 8723. You can call for OBD, Obiena. Thank you. All right. Well, for Namdi Kanu, Ikena Wananini, and OBD, Obienu, and everybody else here on behalf of Biafra, I am T Long, and you have been tuned in to the.